374 down to the third reading file and going back in the um, numerical order of bills on the agenda. The uh, next bill is 285 and Senator Frank Ogden, you are recognized. Thank you. Thank you very much, no, Madam we're Speaker. We're still in 285. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Speaker, and, and for allowing us to uh, continue our conversation on Bill Number 285. That's 33. I'd like to move for its place in, in, into the third reading file, Madam Speaker, with uh, a couple of amendments to be made. Uh, Senator, if I remember correctly, it's already. We just kind of set it aside. So we're you okay? It's so we're still to continue now with. Uh, we have two amendments. Am amendments that, uh, of course, and, and questions that were asked. The, yeah, I have everybody that signed up for it already had spoken. So, and so maybe now in your conversations with others, you, you have an amendment. Well, well, first of all, before I do, because maybe you might want to do it when you're going to close. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on 285? No, that one failed. Uh, all right, so there's nobody else then who would like to speak. So I will recognize then the author, and I understand you do have some amendments. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and again, good afternoon to, to yourself and to uh, our fellow colleagues. Madam Speaker, I do have a couple of amendments. If you recall our previous discussion on Bill Number 285, that's 33, there were two major concerns that were brought up. One was uh, because the HIPAA, the Harmon Industrial Park Association, will be conducting work in refurbishing public roadways, there was a concern by the oversight chair as to why DPW is not part of the proposed legislation. So, Madam Speaker, I do have an amendment and I want to thank the, our legal counsel for assisting in the preparation of this. And this is to add the following amendment to line nine on page eight of the bill, to add a new subsection 77710E to section two of the bill to read, the Department of Public Works shall have regulatory oversight to the extent appropriate of the rehabilitation and improvement of the Harmon Industrial Park roadway envisaged by this act to include, but not be limited to the architectural and engineering design described in this section. So Madam Speaker, if I can request consideration and approval of that amendment, please. On the amendment. No objections. No objections to the amendment, so ordered. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, there was another issue that was brought up in regards to ensuring that there's no... The term that was used by our good Vice Speaker was, um, he questioned whether in fact the proposed legislation would have detrimental reliance. And that is, if in fact, my understanding of, of his concern is that if in fact we commit to the A and E, is there detrimental reliance that the government, by virtue of committing to that, is committing to the subsequent phase two and phase three, which would be the upgrade of the, the roadway, in addition to possibly uh, accessing or acquiring private properties. So there was a, an amendment, again, prepared by our legal counsel, and I wanna thank them for their, thank our legal counsel for his assistance. And this would be to add a new section four which would read, no waiver of immunity. Nothing in this act shall be construed as a waiver of sovereign immunity by the government of Guam for which any action either in law or in equity may lie. And my understanding that from our legal expert that in fact this would address Vice Speaker Cruz's concern. On the amendment. Is there any So this is a new section. Uh, That's correct, Madam Speaker. Yeah, so it'll be a new section and then just to renumber. 
We number the severability clause. Okay. On the amendment, no objections? So ordered. Uh, thank thank you, you, Madam Speaker. I would like to close by uh, thanking you and thanking our colleagues for allowing the placement of this piece of legislation on the agenda and for really having some very good conversation in terms of um, looking at partnering with a number of businesses in the Harmon Industrial Park area that would like to assist the government of Guam in refurbishing that particular road and a few of the arteries. I thank you for being open-minded and, and uh, I certainly anticipate that this is going to be a process that's going to benefit not only everyone that's, that's conducting their business in Harmon, but also the residents there and the entire island community. So I thank you for uh, your consideration or discussion on this bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. You're welcome. And on the motion to send 285 to the third reading file without any objections, so ordered. Bill number 369, Senator McCready, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to make a motion to send Bill 369, Committee on Rules, to the third reading file and uh, discuss. You may proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Bill 369 is introduced um, as a way, and we've heard it a lot this session, as a, as a way of being a little more creative with the financing and giving a little more autonomy to, uh, to the Chief of Police uh, to spend some of the revenues that that the department has received from the vehicle inspection safety fees and the uh, registration renewal that's the obis fees uh, what we are proposing in our bill madam speaker is that um, current law mandates that 30 percent of it's a 70 30 split 70 percent goes to maintenance and 30 percent goes to new cars after having discussions with the chief of police and 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 his committees um, it was it was suggested and, and introduced as law, or as a bill, that we allow the chief 100% um, autonomy to spend those monies on possibly buying new vehicles. As it stands right now from 2013 to today, we roughly averaged a little north of $300,000 in the OBIS fees. And what, what, what the chief of police has been, has been able to, to accomplish uh, as far as purchasing vehicles is roughly about two vehicles with the 30% out of the, the, the 100%. If we, were, if we were going to now give him 100% uh, ability to, to use those revenues uh, towards new vehicles, we're looking at anywhere from six to eight uh, vehicles of purchasing for the, for the police department, and that is just for patrol only. Um, it costs about Roughly between forty forty thousand five hundred dollars to to fully um, um, dress up a police vehicle, and the final cost would be about there forty thousand five hundred. So, with this money, the Guam Police Department um, could solve that short-term problem of uh, shortage of vehicles. I hope my my colleagues uh, can support this. The committee report has uh, reflected that we have uh, six yeses to pass, uh, and um, that, that's a pretty good sign. And so I, I, hope we, I hope we stay on that trend, uh, Madam Speaker. But uh, this is something that is a win-win situation. It's protecting the community and making sure that we have good vehicles. Thank you. On the motion, Senator Ogden. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I, I certainly stand in support of this legislation. And just so that, so that our, our people have a very good understanding in terms of the OVIS fees, this is the $15 uh, that is assessed to every vehicle safety inspection that is conducted just prior to our registration of our vehicles, of which a large percentage of that goes to the Guam Police Department primarily for the procuring of vehicles. Right now, the existing law restricts only 30% that can be utilized to purchase new police vehicles and or to subsidize the, the use of privately owned vehicles for police service. And what the good sponsor is proffering is to certainly give the flexibility to the chief of police. There's already accountability measures in terms of reporting and ensuring that not only the legislative body but also the governor's office are aware of how these funds are being expended and how they're, they're procuring the vehicle. So that's 
one of the issues is that only 30% of these resources can be used specifically for procuring new vehicles or for utilizing privately owned vehicles for police services. The other aspect, Madam Speaker, is that 70% of the, the funds that are generally collected are right now in law tagged to be used solely for the repair and maintenance of police patrol vehicles within the government of Guam. The challenge is, is certainly being able to try to balance that because if we don't have vehicles to rep repair, then obviously the use of the 70% restriction, it would, we would literally have money sitting in an account awaiting to be used. So what the, the chief has requested through the good sponsor is the flexibility to be able to ensure that he or she, any future chief, uh, has the flexibility to be able to procure brand new vehicles, to be able to enter into lease arrangements, should that be necessary, or to be able to utilize whatever percentage of the funds for the maintenance, the upkeep, and the repair of vehicles. So I, I believe that, Madam Speaker, the flexibility is warranted. Uh, it's certainly going to reinforce public safety out in the community, provide the chief of police with that flexibility in, in the use of this particular funding mechanism. And I certainly look forward to additional brand new police vehicles out in the streets as this law is enacted or this proposal is enacted into law and allows for the additional use and flexibility. So I stand in full support of this proposal. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. You're welcome, Senator. On the motions, anybody else? Mr. Vice Speaker. Madam Speaker, uh, I rise not so much in opposition to the legislation. I just want to caution everybody. A previous legislature wrote this specifically to make sure that 70% was set aside for maintenance. And I don't know about this theory that you have leftover money because you don't have any vehicles to fix. I thought we had photographs of vehicles sitting because there was no maintenance money. If it is the desire of the oversight chair, I'm hoping that within three months, we're not going to be back here and saying we need maintenance money. Maintenance has been the bane of Guam. Not only in maintenance of vehicles, but maintenance of buildings. We have a problem trying to figure out how to spell it, much less be able to understand what is, ne is needed. I really caution against this. Anyone else who would like to speak on the motion? Senator, do you w want to close? Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the, the body for their input. Um, just to just touch on uh, just one thing that was, was brought up about the maintenance. And the Guam Police Department has been very fortunate in being able to have a public-private partnership with certain companies in our community to help them with the maintenance. This isn't this isn't looking at a at a vehicle who's in a in a in a compound that doesn't work anymore, saying we can't fix it. Th those are just there's a there's a thousand moving parts in this in this police department, and these are one of the issues that when the when the chief of police uh, who's there every day, who who knows when the money's coming in and and how to spend it, it this is this is something that he requested. And I think if you look at his track record, uh, it's been pretty outstanding from when he started. So to undermine that and to, to say that, you know, we're not going to maintain these vehicles is kind of cutting the chief short. And I, and I think that's not the message that I want to send. But the, the, they're on the right track, and I think uh, this will help them get to where they need to go. It's not the, obviously not the end all to all the fiscal problems with the police department or the government. But I think little by little, we have to take those steps to get to where we want to go. So, so, but I thank the, the speakers for, for their either opposition or support. I would like to also make a couple of amendments to add Senator Uggen as a co-sponsor. And I know I spoke to you about this bill earlier, Madam Speaker, 
Uh, I don't know if you want to be a co-sponsor, but if you would like to add you as the third co-sponsor. On the motion, without any objection, so ordered. And final amendment, just a technicality, I'd like uh, for legal counsel to amend the, the title um, when it goes into the voting file and engrossed. Thank you. Well, there was a, a general uh, motion that was made uh, earlier for any technical uh, corrections that needed to be made, and normally what legal counsel would do is to make sure that the title uh, it does uh, follow with the, the body. Yes, I was just okay. informed by legal counsel that uh, okay. they needed to change something. Yes. So. Okay. Thank you. So ordered. On the motion to send 369 to the third will file without any objections. So ordered. Three seventy five. Senator Ada. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I move to place uh, Bill 375-33-COR as amended by the committee and uh, move it to third reading file, and I'd like to speak on it. You may proceed. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, Bill 375 um, basically seeks to reserve a particular portion of Oka Point, lot 5173, um, to set aside a, a piece of property which is currently being used by a um, cultural group uh, right above the Hilton there, and what's being passed around is a uh, aerial photograph which will show where this piece of property is. And, and what it proposes to do is uh, actually to have here in the central part, northern part of Guam, a cultural center similar to what we have down in the south, Gefpagu. It's an area which will be close by to the tourist district, uh, that would be accessible uh, for the tourists to go to and, and be able to um, see for themselves the cultural um, artwork uh, that we have available and maybe even activities that they have. Uh, so if you take a look at, uh, and so basically what it does is it just sets that property aside, which is approximately eight and a half acres, um, to be designated as the site for a Chamorro Cultural Center. Uh, now, the group that's in there right now, they, they currently have a license to be there up until about, I believe, January. And then after that, the Chamorro Land Trust will have to then um, work on a new um, uh, lease arrangement uh, for that piece of property uh, for, a cultural, uh, for cultural activities should Bill 375 be passed. If you take a look at the aerial photograph that has been passed out for Bill 375 and put it side by side with the aerial photograph that was uh, earlier passed out for Bill 374, you'll see where this uh, property that's being set aside for the cultural center uh, sits adjacent to and contiguous uh, to the area that's being suggested uh, up at uh, Oka Point. Uh, so regardless of whether, you know, uh, it'll, be, it'll basically be contiguous to um, the, um, the property that's being set aside by, that was being proposed by Bill 374. Uh, so it's really a simple bill, Madam Speaker. It, uh, it sets aside that property strictly for as a Chamorro Cultural Center, and, and that's all that it does. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a brief recess.
So on the motion, is there anyone who would like to participate in the discussion of Bill 375? There being none, so in the motion to send 375 to the third reading file without any objections, so ordered. Three eighty five, Senator Torres, you're recognized. Seduce Mossy, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the committee report was recently provided um, as of today, in fact, and upon review of the committee report, I believe it's in the best interest. On your um, motion first? Your motion to place? Uh, speaker, I, I move that this be re, um, that this no that this be sent back to committee and i'd like to explain why oh oh okay i understand so yes. you would like to explain then yes okay. um you may proceed upon review of the committee report uh it appears that the a lot of the support that um went into the writing of this bill the formulation of the concepts of this bill we're not, uh, we're not supported in the committee report by testimony by the two agencies uh, with whom I had consulted and, and spoken with. And so I think that, that in order to, to make the, the bill more compelling and to uh, garner the support that, that I would like for this bill to have by my colleagues, I believe that it's best that I refer it back to committee so that we can allow for the committee report to be complete evidencing the support of both the Chamber of Commerce and uh, Guam Economic and Development Authority. I also um, would like to send it back to committee because the, the committee report also contains some inaccuracies in my presentation uh, in, in how it was written and I'd like the opportunity to just uh, clean it up, you know, since it is a matter of public record and um, and so with that I, I I respectfully ask that, that it just be brought back to committee and then I can deal with, the, um, with it at that point. So on the motion to send 385 back to committee, hearing no objections, so ordered. Thank you, Senator. 386, Senator Munya Barnes, you're recognized. I'll see, um, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'd like to move Bill Number 386-33 COR to the third reading, and if I can speak on it. Yes, Senator, you may proceed. <coughs> Madam Speaker, uh, Bill Number 386-33 uh, is an act to adopt the rules and regulations governing the administration, development, and implementation procedures and guidelines of the Housing Trust Fund. The intent of this bill, Madam Speaker, is to approve the rules and regulations for the Housing Trust Fund and that this trust fund will be the dedicated funding source for the Guam Housing Corporation's Housing Trust Fund programs. Um, section by section, Madam Speaker, uh, it talks about the Housing Trust Fund will support the affordability and the accessibility of housing for the residents of Guam uh, Madam Speaker, this fund will not be commingled, and any unexpended funds uh, uh, that's in the account, Madam Speaker, will remain in the account. Uh, the program can be used for housing programs under the Guam Housing Corporation. Uh, there is a 10% uh, allocation for administrative fees. Uh, the corporation shall de uh, determine a percentage for each program up to 10%. The fund shall not be used, uh, Madam Speaker, to pay for any delinquent uh, taxes or fees or other charges on properties assisted by housing trust fund programs, Madam Speaker, and that the Guam Housing Corporation will be responsible for the administration of the housing trust fund. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, <coughs> uh, this, um, rules and regulations was sent down to this August body. Uh, but as, as you and I know, uh, um, 
just recently the president of Guam Housing Corporation had just passed away and he had been working really hard when he had come on board to make sure that the implementation of the rules and regs uh, would go through. Um, he uh, did, um, you know, go through the chain of command and uh, apparently sometimes when it goes through the process and through the chain of events that, that it gets held up in some areas um, and that's exactly what happened to this bill, but he never gave up. And right when uh, we assured him that we were waiting for the clearances from the administration and the, and the attorney's general's office, he too took the time to follow the process forward. So it's, this is it's in its form as submitted to this August body, and I hope my colleagues will support those efforts. And with that being said, uh, you and I have been working on housing issues, Madam Speaker, for quite a long time now, and I'd like to know, if you don't mind, if you want to be second co-sponsor. <laughs> okay. On, On the, the motion. motion, hearing no objection, so ordered. thank you, Senator. Thank you. Anyone who would like to speak on the motion? Third reading. Uh, On the motion to send 386 to third reading file without any objection. So just looking at you, waiting for that hand to go up. Senator Spaudan, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I, you know, in general, I, I support the intent and, and whatnot. I do have a question, though, and that would be on page four, uh, subsection three. It would be uh, starting on line 13 and continues on to uh, line 14. And basically, um, if I read it from the start, the Board of Directors of the Guam Housing Corporation shall approve monies held in the fund for the improvement, preservation, or expansion of affordable housing, which I believe is the real main intent mm -hmm. of this bill. However, the next uh, uh, phrase says, to finance foreclosure prevention activities on Guam. And I suppose I just need to understand what that means. Are we, talk are we talking seminars? Are we talking helping families? Are we bailing families out? Uh, not sure what that means. Okay. Senator, do you yield to the question? Uh, just based on my understanding, Madam Speaker, this is part of the mission mandate uh, of Guam Housing and uh, the rules and regulations were put to, together based on what's already an existing code and that was part of the transition. So it's into where it used to say or, but now it's not an or, it's to finance. Well, it's a part of the program on all for, for the utilization of the trust in housing trust fund. But what kind of activities, Madam Speaker, are we Madam talking Madam Speaker, about? we can take a minute break to look at the tec legal technicality okay. of it. We'll I take a brief recess. Thank you.
question. Um, we're going to go ahead and set aside 386 uh, until we were able to get some more um, answers from Guam Housing. And we're going to move on now. As a matter of fact, I'm going to declare this session day as TC Ada Day, session day. Senator Ada, Bill 387. Yes, please. Uh, Madam Speaker, um, I move to place Bill 387-33-COR uh, to third reading, and I would like to discuss it. And is it as, okay, it's, it's as introduced. As introduced. Okay, you may proceed. Yes, Madam Speaker, uh, as we're speaking, the page is um, um, distributing uh, aerial photographs, just so that you get an idea of where these lots are that are being uh, rezoned. It's really a real simple lot. Uh, this all has to do with a project that Guam Waterworks has to basically uh, shut down the sewer lift station at the um, uh, um, across from Windward Hills. There, the uh, what the heck's the name of that? Yeah, uh, to, to basically uh, take the wastewater from the Baza Gardens up in Windward Hills, and uh, to be and to transmit that wastewater down to the new wastewater treatment plant in Agate. But in order for GWA to be able to do that, they need to install uh, a pump, a couple of pump stations along the way. Uh, so Guam Waterworks has acquired the private properties. Um, the, the needed private property from um, the private from the owner, um, and that was you know it was a it was a mutual um, transaction, mutually convenient transaction, and now what we need to do just to basically uh, close the loop on this is to uh, rezone that small piece of property that they're going to put the pump station on. Uh, from agricultural to a public facility uh, zone. And so the aerial photograph just simply shows, um, you know, where, uh, these, these, um, where these lots are at uh, that, um, that, is, um, that is involved in the, um, in, uh, where these two pump stations are at. So it's really a real simple, um, transaction is just to, um, I mean, aside from the section one, the legislative findings and intent, which is probably longer than the actual action clause, uh, section two is uh, just to change the zoning designation from A to public facility, uh, and then section three is that the reversionary clause, if nothing happens within a year from the date of enactment, then the um, and um, then it, it returns, the, the air, that lot returns, reverts back to an agricultural zone designation. But we don't have to worry about that because um, the, the uh, work is actually already in place. Uh, the engineering firm is doing the necessary designs uh, and it'll be just a matter of time before they actually start then laying the lines uh, down to the multi-million dollar wastewater treatment plant in Agate. Uh, so, if anybody has any questions, I'll try and answer it. Uh, otherwise, uh, so so you know, for the two lots that are being uh, rezoned uh, is down in an area. If you take a look at that first page on Bill 387 aerial photograph, on the upper left there it says Lot 402-R10. That's a that's an area that's located down by the. Upper Heights uh, officers housing uh, down by the Apalacho Bridge. Uh, the other uh, lot where this, um, where the uh, pump station, the other pump station is to be constructed is right up there by the, um, uh, across from the Windward Hills Golf Course. Uh, and it's all along Route 17. So that's, that's all that um, Bill 387 does, Madam Speaker. Can we take a brief recess?
questions were answered during that brief recess. So is there anyone who would like to speak on the motion? There being none, so the motion to send 386, uh, 387 uh, to the third reading file without any objections, so ordered. Thank you, Senator. Senator Ada on 393. Uh, Madam Speaker, um, I move to place Bill 393-33-COR as amended uh, to the third reading file, and I'd like to discuss it. You may proceed, Senator. Okay. Uh, so, Madam Speaker, uh, what's being passed around right now, again, is another aerial uh, map. Uh, to give you uh, uh, some orientation of the lot that we are talking about. And, um, and basically what, what this bill does is up there in, um, in, in Harmon area, uh, Guam Water Works has had for the longest time the Northern District Wastewater Treatment Plant. That's where all the wastewater comes from, Jigo, Anderson Air Force Base, uh, Barrigada, it all goes into there, gets processed, and then gets discharged out to the ocean. Um, but that particular wastewater treatment plant uh, really just provides a primary treatment, puts some chemicals in it, uh, kills as much of the bacteria and whatnot, and then pumps it out. So the US EPA has um, uh, has ordered the Guam Water Works to upgrade its treatment uh, capability to secondary treatment. And so uh, in order for GWA to be able to do that, they need additional land uh, to build the additional facilities that would allow them to then put that wastewater through a uh, secondary treatment. And um, adjacent then to where the plant is located, and you'll see it um, in the first page of that uh, Exhibit A uh, that, that was just handed out. You'll see there, um, there's a, a shaded area in blue, uh, and it says uh, Northern District Wastewater Treatment Plant, GWA. That is the additional property that GWA needs to expand into. The existing wastewater treatment plant is directly to the southeast of that. Um, gosh, it's, it's in real small um, uh, letters there. But if you look on the second page, it'll show you, it'll show you a depiction of, on the bottom right, um, you'll see basically the configuration of the existing wastewater treatment plant and then uh, the, where the area is to be that GWA proposes to expand into. The area that GWA needs to expand into belongs to the, uh, well, actually is Crown Land. And Crown Land is uh, actually property that has no original landowners uh, associated with it, but is under the, um, is under the, the guardianship of the Ancestral Lands Commission. And, um, and, and so these crown lands are actually intended uh, to generate revenue. Can we please uh, keep the volume down? But I am listening. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I, I, I know you were listening. I, I was just having a hard time concentrating. Uh, so, so what's being proposed here is, and, and uh, Guam Water Works has been in consultation with the Ancestral Lands Commission to purchase this 17 acres of ancestral, uh, of crown lands. Um, and, uh, and of course, the purchase price we based on whatever the appraised value is. Now, 
for the 17 acres of land, we're probably talking about, uh, I don't know, if you figure maybe the going rate there, I believe, is maybe around $30 per square meter. We're probably talking about uh, $2 million. And so uh, what would happen, according to the bill here then, is that uh, when this sale transaction is completed, uh, the money will be deposited into an account called the um, land bank account. And um, what the funds in that land bank account is where the, um, when it finally gets dispersed, that's the fund uh, that is dispersed to those landowners, the ancestral landowners, who will never get their lands back. For example, the owners uh, whose land uh, is where the, the GIAA runway sits on, the landowners where uh, that is in Naval Station. So from this land bank, these funds uh, then will be used to basically divvy that out. Um, the actual disbursement of these funds hasn't been uh, effected at all because uh, Ancestral Lands Commission is still waiting for the rules and regulations to be approved. Um, from the Attorney General's office. But basically, that's what, um, that's what this uh, Bill 393 does. And um, the appraisal will be paid for by GWA. Um, it will be, the appraisal shall have to be done by two different appraisers. One shall be selected by the Department of Land Management. And um, the other is, um, will be selected, of course, by Guam Waterworks. Now, the appraisal, currently that land is a uh, zone, hotel zone. So the bill calls that the property is to be uh, appraised as a hotel zone land. Um, in addition to that, uh, GWA will have to pay for the survey uh, of this property uh, and have it recorded. And then the purchase price, of course, uh, as I indicated, uh, shall be based on whatever the appraised value is. Now, um, the bill requires that the two entities sit down and within 120 days to, um, to be able to, to finalize uh, this transaction. And finally, um, in Section 3, uh, the bill calls for rezoning of this property from hotel zone to public facility. And so that, Madam Speaker, is, um, is basically what uh, Bill 393 does. Thank you. We're going to take another recess for a moment.
Senator Sir Nicholas, you're recognized. Oui. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, um, I recognize the intent of this legislation, and um, I just had a, a couple of um, questions with regards to uh, some of how the mechanics work in the bill. Um, first of all, in, uh, excuse me, on page three, section two, subsection C, starting on line 24, it requires an appraisal to be done on the property, and that appraisal um, shall be paid for by GWA, and uh, land management shall, shall select one of the appraisers. And I'm, I'm sure the appraisal is, of course, to determine the value of the property. But if you go to page four, line four, subsection E of the same section, under purchase price and transfer agreement, it reads that GWA shall work with the Guam Ancestral, Ancestral Lands Commission to determine an appropriate compensation for the property purchase. And so what makes my, my, my concern at this juncture, Madam Speaker, is we do an appraisal in Section C, but Section E kind of creates language where the price, the purchase price, can be something other than what was appraised. It may be lower, as a matter of fact. And um, one of my concerns of that is in the real estate industry, they base uh, property valuations on uh, comparables. And so if we have an appraisal done under Section C and then a purchase and transfer of the property at a lower price under Section E, it not only affects the um, transaction between the two agencies, but it also affects the um, corresponding land valuations because of the um, uh, real estate industry's practice of using uh, like comparables when determining value. So I, I, I think that uh, I would like uh, some time to um, clarify why we're going to be appraising the property but opening the door for a purchase price that may be different under Section E. That was um, one of my concerns. <laughs> my other concern, Madam Speaker, was on page three, um, lines 18 and 19. Subsection B of Section 2, it reads, the administrative transfer of property shall become effective upon enactment of this act. So the, tr the property will be transferred from the Ancestral Lands Commission to Waterworks once we pass the bill, but the purchase transaction could happen later. I, I would obviously have to because they wouldn't have been authorized to even appraise. And so even in the real estate industry, Madam Speaker, um, there is a timing factor where the property could be transferred now, but the valuations could change in the future. And because there is no um, set timeline for when this appraisal is to take place and when this purchase price, I'm sorry, the, the purchase is supposed to be within 120 days of enactment. So we're going to transfer today and we're going to purchase and transfer within 120 days based, and, and we're also going to have an appraisal done under Section C. So I, I would prefer, just mechanically, that, that um, the transfer shall be effective upon, upon um, consummation of the purchase price and transfer agreement, and that the purchase price and transfer agreement shall be based on an amount no less than the appraisal as determined in subsection C. So that's what I would probably like to proffer as an amendment, Madam Speaker, but it will take me some time to um, craft that language. So if I may request a, um, a set aside of the bill to be able to prepare the language in that effect. So, so Madam Speaker, if, if I may quickly respond. Uh, yes, Senator. Yeah. So first of all, on uh, the concern that was raised on, um, on page four, uh, line uh, subsection E, that GWA shall work with GALC, uh, what is, what is what is meant there is that, remember, there's two appraisals that's got to be done. Uh, GWA shall pay for the appraisal of two, shall pay, pay for the appraisal of property by two different appraisers. So usually what happens then is when the two appraisers more than likely will not come in at the same appraisal value. So then they have to sit down and, and get, you know, arrive at the average of, of those two appraisals. So that is what uh, actually uh, is 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 meant by they shall GWA shall work with GAL, GALC to determine that what is that you know uh, sweet spot between the two different appraisals. The second part on page three there about the administrative transfer. Um, 
GWA is wanting to get in as soon as possible into the property so that they can start doing their survey, they can start doing their board testing uh, while the you know, finance people and whatnot are, are working on uh, the necessary appraisals and, and whatever else. But the engineers want to get in there as soon as they can to start doing a lot of that preliminary work. And so that's the purpose for the administrative transfer upon enactment. Oh, yes, Senator Wright. Thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I appreciate the response, and it does, uh, it does, make, some, it does make sense. Um, I, I would prefer that we actually spell out the language under subsection E that it shall be based on the median uh, value of the two appraisals. Okay. And, then the other, and then just the other concern, too, just with respect to the um, administrative transfer of the property, is that uh, on the appraisal in subsection C, the property is currently zoned H and appraisal shall be based on the current zoning H. But once the administrative transfer takes place, it will be transferred as a, and, and, and regarded as zone PF, a public facility zone. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure if appraisers can still, um, within the confines of the ethics of their profession, still zo um, appraise something at one zone when the law has already technically created as another zone. So it still may require that we um, have the appraisal done uh, before the administrative transfer. Perhaps that, that, that's something that we can clarify. But uh, because we're trying to specify that the valuation shall be determined on an H zone, but the administrative transfer will, will take effect immediately and thus have it classified as a public facility zone, I don't know if they can still appraise it as an H when it's already legally a PF. So um, those are things, I guess, that we can, we can perhaps clarify, Madam Speaker. Okay, so um, Senators, what we're going to do is because we don't have uh, enough time to do this and there's several members here uh, that would like to attend the investiture that we would not have a quorum. So we will recess until tomorrow morning at nine.